Whatever your background, whatever your politics, whatever your religion, it's impossible to deny the significance of Jesus' birth. Bethlehem means house of bread in Hebrew. The town was known for its grain fields running down these slopes. After the harvest, shepherds were welcome to bring their animals into these fields to eat the remaining grain and stubble. In return, the sheep and goats fertilized the fields for the next planting season. In first century Judea, being a shepherd was considered a lowly profession. These were the social outcasts. That's what makes this next account in the Gospels so special. News of Jesus' birth came at night to this field or one very near here. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The birth announcement of Jesus was not made in Jerusalem to King Herod or to the temple high priest. It was made to regular, hardworking shepherds, common men who were having the most amazing evening of their lives were the very first visitors, as was recorded in the Gospel of Luke. And so it was when the angels had gone away from them up into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass that the Lord has revealed to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. The person who would become the most influential person to ever walk on earth had the most incredible birth announcement ever with a heavenly angelic choir. But he arrived as a helpless baby in an animal feed box with common people and animals as his royal court, witnesses to his arrival. It is indeed an odd start to our story, but it's also one of the reasons why the gospel story is so fascinating all of the mysteries and paradoxes and unexpected twists and turns, they're everywhere, like in this next part. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him, Matthew 2, one through two. Going back for hundreds of years, many people have tried to figure out what exactly was the star of Bethlehem, assuming it to be a naturally occurring phenomenon. They've done this by doing some extremely tedious mathematical calculations, essentially running the night sky backwards in time in order to figure out what was going on in the sky at about the time of the birth of Christ. Now, well, there are some pretty interesting theories out there, but they all rely on the event being a knowable event and not a one-time miracle. If it was a miracle, it will remain a mystery. Now, we don't know the exact time of the visit of the Magi, though it was probably not the night that Jesus was born. And the Gospels don't tell us how many Magi there were, though it does mention three gifts that were presented. In case you're ever asked, that's one of those trick Bible questions. Now, what we do know for certain about the Magi in general is that they were considered to be wise men. They were from the East, most likely Persia or Chaldea, which is modern day Iran or Iraq, and that they most likely traveled in a caravan, 
from hundreds or possibly over a thousand miles away. The historian Herodotus recorded two meanings for Magi, one as a tribe of the Medes and the other a special caste whose actions include interpretation of omens and dreams. Roman author Pliny the Elder, who lived from 23 to 79 AD, wrote that the Magi practiced some type of magic. The Roman Jewish historian Josephus mentions Magi who were advisors and dream interpreters for King Nebuchadnezzar, corroborating the story written in the book of Daniel in the Hebrew scriptures. The Magi in the Gospels were apparently respected since they got an audience with a curious King Herod who then asked them to go search for the child and report back directly to him. It's also possible that the Magi had studied the writings of the prophet Daniel, who in time past had been the chief of the court seers in Persia. Daniel delivered a prophecy which gives a timeline for the birth of the Messiah. The Gospels record that the Magi brought with them three gifts to present to Jesus, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Historically, we know that gold was a symbol of kingship. Frankincense was perfumed incense that was a symbol of deity. And myrrh was an anointing or embalming oil, a symbol of honored death. Or as the third century theologian Origen wrote, gold as to a king, myrrh as to one who was mortal, and incense as to a god. Whatever your background, whatever your politics, whatever your religion, it's impossible to deny the significance of Jesus' birth. Although he was born in a tiny town to humble parents with no local press coverage, his birth announcement was heralded by thousands of angels in a night sky choir. Although his first bed was a feeding trough among dirty animals and lowly shepherds, foreign dignitaries found it necessary to travel up to a thousand miles to visit the baby and give him gifts fit for a king. Although he was a poor, illegitimate child in the eyes of local Judeans, the religious and political leaders started viewing him as a legitimate threat to their power and control. But why? Obviously, this baby was someone special, someone unique. Was he the long-awaited Messiah spoken of by the Hebrew prophets? Was he royalty of a different kind from a different place? In our next episode of Drive Through History, we'll start unpacking the early years of Jesus' life, exploring the reaction to his birth and the perceived threat to the religious and political authorities. Incredibly, over one-third of the planet celebrates Jesus' birthday over 2,000 years after his birth. There's got to be more to this story. Oh, hi. It's TV's Dave Stotts, and I'm here to tell you to hit the thing and the thing and make sure you ring the, the thing for more of drive-through history because that's what we all need.